happy Monday. It is February 1st. I am out with the kids. We are having such a good time. It, there's got to be at least 10 inches of snow out here. I cannot believe this. I have not seen snow this deep in years. We are having such a great time. There's CJ running in the background. <laughs> there he is, there he is, there he is. There he goes. <laughs> I will be sharing lots of our snow day with you. Um, enjoy. Is the snow good, CJ? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> How are you, my love? I'm recording, you can say hi. But don't drop that on me. <laughs> Please? Please. No. Are you gonna talk? Somebody's camera shy. Just say hi. <laughs> Tell me when. I'm on, I'm on, it's rolling. Okay, try to get it, ready? I One, know. two, three. Ooh. <laughs> Did you get it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Earth Tones Girl podcast. My name is Denise and this is Earth Vlog number 53. You can find me on the web as Earth Tones Girl. I am most active on Instagram. I'm also on Ravelry. The podcast has a Ravelry group, which is the Earth Tones Girl podcast group. And there's also an email address, which is earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. <laughs> I almost forgot. Why did I almost forget? Because it has been five weeks since I was here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My last episode was January, well, my last vlog episode was January 22nd. Yeah, so much has happened. In the last five weeks, we've had five snowstorms, I think, four or five. It feels like a hundred, but I think it's only about four or five. There have been snow days for the kids. There have been teacher conferences. Um... My son wasn't feeling well the other day. He's totally fine, but he was home from school. I'm going with this to say, where I'm going with this is the kids have been home so much and our routine has just been thrown up in the air and topsy-turvy that I've honestly been trying to find a quiet chunk of time to sit and chat with you all. And I thought, okay, that's not going to happen. So <laughs> You just make the time, close the doors, tell everybody to be quiet, and just do it. So I am lucky today. The kids are in school, both of them. And the other thing is my daughter does um, every other day is remote for her. So it's just trying to keep track of stuff. It's just my mommy hat has been glued to my head. I haven't had time to be the podcaster and um, the vlogger, which is okay, which is okay. But... Um, yeah, I, I miss being here. I really do. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you're all still here. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, it's It has been a very, very full couple of weeks or several weeks. And the kids have enjoyed the snow. But honestly, I think even after a certain, like after storm number five, they were like, okay, we're kind of done now. And the last few days, the temperature's actually been up a little bit. It's been in the high 40s, low 50s. So it's been a little teaser of spring and it feels so, so good. Um, so yeah, I feel like the stir crazy from being inside all the time, the weather's starting to get nice. It's it's It was just getting to all of us, myself included. So, but all that said, I'm here now. I'm so happy to be here. Yay. <laughs> I also, before I get into everything that's been going on, um, even the puppy had appointments and vet appointments and haircuts and everything. It's, it's just been crazy. But before I get into all of that, I really want to say thank you so much for filling the tip jar for your donations, for your contributions. Um, some of you have done monthly contributions. Some of you have done um, one-time contributions. I am so blown away by the response, by the messages, by the comments. 
the support you all have shown me has just, it's, it really has blown me away and it's touched me. It really has. Um, recording that last segment of the last episode and really sharing how I felt about myself and my work, it, it was hard. It was really hard and, and I could feel myself getting a little, you know, a little schwitzy <laughs> and just starting to sweat. And it was, it's always difficult putting up, saying that you have worth and acknowledging that you have worth. So for you all to support me in the way that you did um, via messages and and monetarily, I, I cannot thank you enough for that. Thank you so very much. And then I started to feel guilty because I put the message out there about the tip jar and all of you are contributing and everything. And then there's no episode for five weeks. <laughs> I just feel like the universe sometimes just likes to stick it to you. Like, <laughs> you've got a plan, right? Yeah. Okay. I've got other plans. So I'm here now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Um, I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful for the acknowledgement and for the support. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, so I wanted to say that. And what else has been happening? A lot of knitting. Because there have been so many snow days and there just hasn't been... I mean, again, because of the quarantine, because of just COVID period, we don't go anywhere. So, and then... On top of that, even if it is a nice day, we don't, we haven't really been going for walks because there's been so much snow and the weather's been so incredibly cold. So I've been knitting like crazy, like crazy, but I will share that with you in just a bit. I've got some stuff. It's a lot. Well, it's not a lot, but it's a good amount, but I'll share that with you in a minute. But just a little housekeeping news. Um, I have wanted since January to update the shop and it hasn't been updated and it's been a real push pull for me there um and it's sort of like if you've got 10 minutes what do you do with if you've got 10 minutes for something what do you do with that 10 minutes um do you knit do you do i knit do i update the shop do i take care of the laundry? Do I, you know, fold the pile of laundry that's waiting to be folded? It's just trying to juggle time. And honestly, I feel like lately, um, I've really wanted to knit a lot and make, and I've been on Instagram quite a bit. Uh, there's been a mid along, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, and the shop is just kind of taken a wee bit of a backseat. No one has complained. No one has, made mention of it or, you know, I get an occasional question like, oh, when are you going to update the shop? But I, I'm just thanking you for just kind of letting it hang out there. And, and it's there and I love that it's there and I will get back to it at some point. Um, I don't know when, but I don't know when, <laughs> but I just want to acknowledge that, um, I feel like I keep po postponing, postponing, postponing. And, it just kind of is what it is. When there's only so many hours in the day, it's it's picking, making decisions and picking battles and deciding what you need, what I need in a moment. And right now between juggling with the kids and my husband's had a lot, a lot going on at work, a lot. And I feel like I've been flying solo, which is okay. But again, when your time is limited, it's okay, do I update the shop and prepare myself for the orders that are going to come in and taking the time to pack the orders and all of that. And it, it's, it takes a lot of time to do all of that. Or do I sit and do homework with the kids and make sure dinner's on the table by five thirty six o'clock and everybody's in bed at eight, eight thirty. So it's, it's a juggling act and it's just, it's just wearing the mommy hat. I know so many of you out there can, can relate to that. And then the kids are now in bed 8.30 is the goal, but it's usually more a little closer to 9 o'clock. And, um, you know, by the time the house is actually quiet, then my husband wants to talk about his day and what's going on with him. So, you know, I'm attentively listening to him and interacting and talking, just talking to him, whether it's about, it is about work or just talking in general. And, okay, now it's 10, 10.30. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's... I have to take care of myself and it's so important to do that and 
the needles just call out to me and I, I answer the call. I answer the call and I sit there and I get lost in my audiobook. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. I didn't add that to my little um, list of things to talk about, but I, I will. Um, you know, I fall into my audiobook and my needles and it's just it hits the reset button for me. It really does. It just calms me. It quiets me. It centers me. And then I can be prepared for the next day. So yeah, mothering is hard, you guys. It's hard. Is it hard for you all? I'm sure it is, but no, you're not alone. I know that I'm not alone. I, I hear from other mothers. Um, I see people posting things on Instagram. So yeah, before I go off on a tangent with that. <laughs> Uh, you can tell I haven't been here for a little bit. I'm always kind of rusty and rambly when I when I've, there's been a long hiatus. Um, but let's talk some housekeeping. The In the last episode, I talked about the... Um, it had only been going on for a few days. The Maker Minutes Mitt Along that I, was, that I am co-hosting with Mars, who is Hey Brownberry. And it was exclusively taking place on Instagram. And it was just... Basically, we were all knitting mittens together and it was so much fun. And the response really blew Mars and I away. Uh, we've been meeting there, um, I think two or three times since it started. It started on January 15th and we've met a few times, uh, usually on Mondays, um, just getting together and like checking in with everyone and cheering everybody on and what are you working on and, you know, offering polls and opinions. And do you like full mitts? Do you like fingerless mitts? So that's been really fun, just building up that community there. It's been really, really wonderful. And I know some of you who watch here are also on Instagram and have been participating um, in the make along. So thank you so much for that. And that said, I wouldn't have been a very good host if I weren't mittening and knitting along with all of you. So I will show you my mittens in just a bit. Um, but that mitt along is going to end this Sunday. I cannot believe that six weeks has gone by already. That's again, I just, I really don't understand time. I just can't get my head around how fast time is moving. It's actually a little scary. Um, but it started on the 15th of January and it ends this Sunday, February 28th. Thank you to everybody that participated. The first round of prizes, we gave out prizes at the halfway point, um, so about three weeks in, and then we're giving, giving away um, the second set of prizes on Monday. So if you are watching this and um, if you're watching this over the weekend, please come and join me for an Instagram Live on Monday. It will probably be 12 or 12.30. Um, I'm also going to try to, for those of you not on Instagram, I'm going to try to use the community board here a little bit more just to let you know what I'm working on there. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to join Instagram, and I, I understand that, um, but just to keep you in the loop as to what's happening, trying to just kind of keep everybody on the same page. So, uh, And I also know that some of you don't see the community board because you're watching the these episodes on an iPad, and sometimes they don't, the community board doesn't show up on all devices. I don't know why, but between here, the community board and Instagram, that's how you can find me. So um, yeah, mid along is ending um, on Sunday. And starting on Sunday, I am co-hosting, this is a quick, very, very quick little along, little Cal. I am co-hosting with Julianne Knitter. She's Julianne Knitter, on, Julianne, and she's Julianne Knitter on Instagram, and we are co-hosting a one-week sock challenge. Hmm. We are going to attempt to knit one pair of adult socks in one week, starting on Sunday the 28th, and we end on Saturday the 6th, March 6th. So we're starting at midnight on Sunday night actually Saturday night, so into Sunday morning, um, uh, midnight, whatever time zone you're in, and you can knit one pair, that's two socks, of adult socks, any weight yarn, any pattern yarn, any technique, it is completely up to you. It is not a chat, it's not a challenge against anyone, it's just a challenge for yourself. Can you do it? Can you knit a pair of socks in a week? 
just for fun. It's one week. It's really, really fun. I have participated in this since Julianne started this challenge. Um, and I think with the exception of maybe once I've been able to do it. So I'm really excited. I've already picked my yarn for that. Um, you know what? I'll share it with you right now. So I have my yarn picked out for that. I'm going to be using, so sure. I'm going to be using this. Isn't that beautiful? It is by, this is called Faded Rainbow. It is an 80% merino, 20% nylon, and these are 50 gram, 50 gram skeins. Uh, and this is by Tiny Human Knits. She is Tiny Human Knits, her name is Lauren, and she is Tiny Human Knits on Instagram. Love, love, love these. So I am winding these up on Saturday evening casting on first thing Sunday morning. I might actually stay up till midnight and cast on. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cast these on. So this is going to be um, my adult socks and I'm just doing a plain vanilla sock, 64 stitches, 2.25 needles, 20 rounds on my cuff. I do approximately 70 rounds, 65 to 70 rounds on the leg, do a fish lips kiss heel, and then another 65 to 70 on the foot, rounded toe. That is my go-to recipe. Um, I'm not doing a stitch pattern or anything like that. Um, just blissful stockinette in this absolutely stunning. That actually kind of matches my sweatshirt and my, my wrap today. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to be doing for that. Um, so again, that starts, and that is also going to just be on Instagram. And that starts on the 28th, this Sunday, and runs through next Saturday, March 6th. So come and join, come and join the fun if you are on Instagram. Um, yeah, just come and join the fun. It's gonna be really fun. No pressure, no pressure. It's for fun, no pressure. We're not comparing ourselves to anyone. We're not comparing our makes to each other. It's just for fun. So yay. So, mid along. Again, as a host, I felt I should participate and I should knit along and I did a really simple pair and then I did a not so simple pair, <laughs> which I just love. Okay, so let's do the simple pair first. I'm gonna put these on and I remember to take my watch off this time. I'm always fumbling with my watch and, and everything. So I remember to take it off. Um, oh my gosh, these, I love these so much. And it has been so cold. I've actually worn these because it's been so cold. <clears throat> Ta-da! Here they are. Look at these. Oh my gosh gosh look at those you guys oh I love them so much <laughs> I feel like I do this a lot I've done quite a few pairs of mittens so far this year or mitts so far this year um so these are the name of this pattern is the fire pit mitts um fingerless mitts by Taylor let me just glance at my notes by Taylor who is fiber for people on Instagram um, this yarn is wool stock by Blue Sky Fibers, and it is actually the 21 slouch hat, 21 color slouch hat kit or 21 slouch kit. I'll link to it down below. Um, and it's 21 mini skeins. I think they're about five grams each and it's for slouch hat. So I followed the striping that's on the hat in the mitten. So you, I started here and this is the exact sequence and number of stripes per color that you would find in the hat. These are so warm and I love that I can kind of tuck my fingers in. Just love these so much. They're so squishy. They're so warm. Again, super duper functional. I love mittens, but I love to have my fingers. I love to have access to my fingers. And this is just a um, rolled rim edge. There's no ribbing. And the roll is really subtle because it's kind of a tight tube. Uh, and I did a sewn bind off. That seems to be my new go-to. It's I love the flexibility, but yet it cinches in enough that it's snug and fit fits really well. So it's a sewn bind off that I did. Fire pit mitts using a 21 slouch hat kit by Blue Sky Fibers. Love them. So warm and squishy and super, super beginner friendly. I'll show you. 
don't know if you can see the cut. This is the gusset. It's a really, really short gusset. Um, and it's a really great beginner pattern. It's basically just stockinette. You could do these in a solid. The pattern has, I think the pattern only has solids on the cover and there's two lengths. I did the longer length. There's also a version that comes to about here. So it's a little bit shorter. You don't, if you don't want to do all of this. So yeah, there they are. My fire pit mitts. Love them. Highly recommend this pattern. Um, and then I knit a not so simple pair. <laughs> Right, I'd say beginning of January, Erica Hauser, H-E-U-S-S-E-R, she put out, she put up a post with these mittens that she was working on and called the Varia mitts. Varia is the Latin word for owl. And I saw them and fell madly in love. And she was putting out a call saying the pattern was coming soon. And I reached out to her and said, if you are looking for a test knitter, my needles are yours. I would absolutely love to test knit for you. And I had test knit for her before. And she remembered that she did. She's the designer behind the underwing mitts, the and also the Mayfle Mayfield mitts. And those are the ones that I had test knit for her. Oh, my gosh. Back in 2018, I think. And... 2017 2018 but anyway yes so she says oh my gosh Denise I remember you I would love you to test it and the timing was so perfect because of the middle long so I knit these and she had a pretty tight deadline it was about a two-week turnaround on these and I did it there they are oh peeking at you I'm looking in the wrong way in the camera but I'm peeking at you I love these this is the this is the palm side oh, you guys I don't have words enough to describe how much I enjoyed knitting these um the pattern was super clear and easy to follow if you are a fan of color work I highly recommend her patterns. They are so beautifully written. The charts are just gorgeous. Um, I mean, look at that. Look at that thumb. Oh my gosh. And then on this side, just the way she's got the branch just kind of continuing out. I, I just, ugh. I love these so much. So I knit these just under two weeks. Love them. So, I was obsessed. I was completely, absolutely obsessed with these. Um, I kept the bag. I kept my knitting bag on the kitchen table. And this is every minute I had. I was, you know, working on these. Um, they're squishy. They're warm. They are beautiful. The pattern is beautiful. She did her original pattern with greens down here. Um, with brown and white or brown and cream. But her, the stained glass effect down here was in green. And my backyard, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, at sunset, it is a bright, bright orange. My entire backyard turns orange. And we do have owls in the backyard, which I am obsessed with. And I just thought I have to find, I knew I had this color in my stash. So I went and grabbed it. It's by Zen. So this is Zen Garden down here. I don't remember the colorway, but I will put that in the link below. Um, and then the white, the main color is my Malabrigo sock, my usual go-to in natural. And the brown, it's, it's almost showing up black, but it is brown. There, I think you can see it a little bit better here. Um, it is brown, and that is my Cordovan Malabrigo sock in the Cordovan colorway, which to my horror and chagrin, has been discontinued. I'm so upset about that. I was able to find two skeins. I went on Ravelry immediately and found about four or five people that had it in their stash and it was available for sale. I've sent messages to all of them, have heard back from no one, whatever. And, um... Went, did a search, super duper heavy duty search on Instagram or on the web, and I found six skeins in a shop in I think Montana. I don't even I, not Montana. 
Anyway, it doesn't matter. But found these skeins and the woman said to me on the phone that two of the skeins were a little reddish and then two, four, the other four skeins were a little more chocolatey. I said, right, just send me all of them. Two of the skeins are this color. They're, again, kind of this, it's, again, it's kind of hard to see. Okay, that's a little closer. It's sort of like a chocolatey brown with, with the undertones of burgundy or like maroon in there. The other skeins, the other four are like dark chocolate. They don't look like this at all. I was so heartbroken. I mean, I will still use the yarn. It's still very usable. It's beautiful. I was thinking of maybe just doing a textured cowl with it or something down the line, but I have very little of this yarn left now. So I am using it. I will be using it very sparingly. If anyone out there has the Cordovan Malabrigo sock in the Cordovan colorway, please send me a message. I will buy it from you. Please, please, please. So Erica Hauser, Varia Mitz, Love these. The pattern is now available. It just released, um, I think last weekend. So the pattern is out there. I will link to it down below. It's available on Ravelry and I think Payhip as well. I'm not as familiar with that platform, but I know she has it on another platform outside of Ravelry. So, and I'm not even, it may even be available on her website, but I will link to everything down below for you. So <sighs> you don't need to see my face. Let's just look at these for another minute. I just love them. I love them so, so, so much. So, yep, very emits. Awesome, awesome pattern. Highly recommend it. So I have now done, th I'm just checking the clock as usual. I've now done three of her patterns. I did the Mayfield mitts, which were my, which were blue and white. I've done the underwing mitts and now these, the Varia mitts. Her patterns are just stunning so, so stunning, so worth the time. You don't have to be a super experienced knitter to do the pattern. She talks you through it crystal clear. Again, the charts are very, very easy to follow, easy to understand, highly recommend it. Yeah, so those are my two mitten FOs and I did finish two pairs of socks also. <laughs> it's been a lot of knitting. <laughs> One pair has already been gifted um, to my sister. My sister, and I have this kind of an ongoing joke. I, we all know that I love sock knitting. No surprise there. Um, love it, love it, love it. But I don't always wear my socks. I knit them and put them away. And I've gotten so many messages from people. You should donate them. You should sell them. You should do this. You should do that. And yeah, 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 yeah. But I have also done an episode here on the channel called The Sock Diaries, which explains why I don't give them away or sell them or do anything with them, but keep them stored away. And that episode explains why. Um, but anyway, all of that said, um, my sister's like, oh, so are, you gonna, are, are those for me? Anytime she sees a pair of socks on my needle, she's like, are those for me? Oh, well, when are you gonna knit me a pair? Are you gonna knit me a pair? Well, you're such a selfish knitter. No, 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 no. No such thing as a selfish knitter. Knitting for me is self-care. It is something I do for myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I never apologize for it. And I do not believe in selfish knitting. I just don't. So I finally said, okay, these are going to be for you. And she said, yeah, uh-huh, sure. <laughs> I'll believe it when they're, when they're in my hand or on my feet. So I finished them and I gifted them to her. <laughs> and she went away this past weekend and she sent me this picture and... She's so happy and it's such a small thing. It really, really is a small thing. So I have promised her and I'm publicly again promising her that that is not the, the last pair that she will receive. Um, but anyway, they've already been gifted so I, I don't have them here to show you but I did finish another pair and this pair I actually used f as the sample in a sock knitting tutorial but we'll talk about that in a second. And here they are. Socks, you guys. Oh, look at these. Oh, I love them so, so, so much. There they are, my Tweety socks. This yarn is Knit Pick Stroll. Um, Knit Pick Stroll Tweed. That is this yarn. Um, it is by Knit Picks. Uh, this colorway, this sort of light gray, is called Dove Heather. And this color, which kind of has, it's interesting. Looking at it here, 
it has a burgundy maroonish kind of a tone but when i hold it up to the camera and anytime i try to take a picture of it it looks eggplantish so it, it's depends on the light to get the accuracy of the color but the name of this color is barn door heather that is the name of the color with dove heather for the contrasting and i did a there is so i didn't record a vlog or a podcast episode but i did do a new sock knitting tutorial um and that went up a week ago maybe two weeks ago now <clears throat> So that episode, in that episode, I used, I was knitting on these socks. These were the sample that I used for that, um, for that tutorial. And I explained and taught a different way to knit the heel flap and gusset. Usually when you're knitting a heel flap and gusset, you're knitting it in profile. So you're, you're starting here, you're coming down, you're working one side of your sock, then you turn and you work the other side and you're working your, your gusset decreases. But in the video, I teach a way to do it so you don't have to rearrange your stitches. You stay, you continue to knit front to back. Um, the first time I saw it done, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. But I saw it done on a magic loop. And even though magic loop and two circular needles are very similar, there's still a slightly different way that you manipulate the needles to pick the stitches up. So I demonstrate how to do that in the tutorial. Um, oh my gosh, it has been life changing for some people because I know a lot of people struggle with that rearranging of the stitches. It can be really frustrating and daunting. So um, yeah, so this is the sample that I used uh, and I finished them. The yarn is lovely. It's a slightly lower price point, which is really nice. Um, Quality is wonderful. Oh my gosh, these are going to wear so well. And again, did my usual 64 stitches, 2.25. Um, that's my go-to. And I, I, unless I'm doing a specific pattern um, that's textured, and I actually have a sock on needles, but I'm going to save my whips for another episode. Uh, I'm working on the business casual socks. Um, I think my tan is fiber arts, but we'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, anytime I'm knitting vanilla, that's what I cast on. It's easy, I don't have to think about it, I can just cast on and go. Um, so yeah, here they are. Love them. Heel flap and gusset, knit picks, stroll tweed. Um, I will link to this down below also. Yeah, so that is, um, those are all my whips. Those are just, that's updates, that's everything. Um, trying not to make this episode too too long uh and of course i have to leave in a few minutes to pick the kids up from school anyway <laughs> uh but i also wanted to let you know the between the knit my knitting mojo being at an all-time high i just cannot stop uh i am back to teaching um with vogue knitting live i had taken a couple of months off i took december january and february off just because just to give myself a break and, you know, new classes that they were offering. Uh, but I am teaching with them again this March. So next month, uh, my classes, the event is the 18th. Excuse me. The event is the 18th to the 21st. But I am teaching on the 20th and 21st, the Saturday and Sunday. No Fear Sock Knitting. And I'm teaching the new, the modified or simplified method of knitting that heel so instead of knitting profile we're going i'm going to teach you how to do it um front to back um so no more rearranging of stitches <laughs> i honestly think going forward i i will only knit my heel flap and gusset this way i will not go back to the profile method unless the pattern specifically calls for that i don't think i will ever do that again not saying never but this new method is my new go-to so um yeah, so it's No Fear Sock Knitting, Heel Flap and Gusset Simplified. I'm teaching that Saturday and Sunday. It's a two-part class. I am teaching Sock Knitting Tips and Tricks and also a new class, new to Vogue and new to me, Mittens Made Easy. It is a mitten class, mitten knitting, mittens made easy. So excited. So looking forward to it. So excited. Um, I think it's going to be fun. I think taking a break again rested me and renewed my knitting energy and my enthusiasm so I'm really really psyched 
to um, to get back on the Zoom teaching with them again. And, and I really enjoy working with Vogue. Um, so I think it's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be a very busy weekend. <laughs> very busy, but really, really fun. Um, yeah, and I already talked about the new um, sock knitting tutorial here on the channel. So you can go and check that out. Um, so I think it's been... It's been busy. It's been really, really busy. I have gotten some knitting done. Um, oh, and for those of you that were wondering, I had talked in the last episode. You know what? I'm going to go grab it real quick. Uh, yeah, it's here. I had cast on a different mitten, um, the Shara Cup mitts, and that pattern is now officially, officially a pattern. It was only a recipe, meaning the concept of how to knit them, needle suggestion, um, yarn to use, etc., was on my wool mitten, her blog, Carrie's blog, but she has now written up an official pattern for it for the uh, Shara Cup mitts. And I had cast on this, uh, and I was going to knit a pair in the finger, the fingering weight version of that. I had done a worsted weight version, and I cast on this. And you know what? I was really excited about it when I first cast it on. And I, it, I had it on the table and I kept staring at it and I was like, ah, good. I like the colors, but it, it just wasn't exciting me anymore. I don't know why. It's not the pattern. It was the colors of the yarn that I chose and I just wasn't digging it. And you know what? It's okay to change your mind. You don't have to finish a project. You can cast something on and say, yeah, 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 this is really great. And then you put it down for a little while and say, eh, you know, not loving that anymore. Maybe it's the colors that you chose or the texture, whatever it is. It's okay to change your mind. I haven't ripped it out because I may change my mind back. But right now, this is just a swatch really is what this has become for me. Um... I don't know that I will finish it and that's okay. But I knit those other two pairs and loved them, loved every stitch. So it's okay to change your mind. But I wanted, in case anyone was like, oh, what happened to the share cup mitts? Um, you know, changed my mind. But the pattern is available. I will link to that down below as well. Um, so go and check, you know what? I'm gonna make just a quick note to myself for that. Share a cup link. There we go. If not, I'm going to forget. That's it, guys. Um, so happy to be here with you all today. Uh, it's been a busy, busy, <laughs> busy beginning of the year. I mean, I know we're into the year already. It's the end of the second month, but February was a blur. Oh my gosh, it really, really was a blur. Uh, I'm hoping March slows down a little bit, <clears throat> but then again, who the heck knows? <laughs> we we have a plan and, and the universe has a plan. So we'll just, I'm just going to ride the wave. I really can't complain right now. Things feel pretty good. Um, finding my joy, holding on to my joy, not letting things take that away from me. Don't let anything take it away from you guys. Just don't hold on to it. Okay. It's easy to let it go. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed. I do. Um, I mean, I come here and I sit and I chat with you and I, I look, you know, everything looks organized and put together and, you know, I'm smiling, but I'm not smiling all the time. So I, and I want to be honest about that. I really do. So try to hold on to your joy. Have a great weekend. Um, hopefully I will get this out. I'm recording this on Friday, the 26th <laughs> of February. Uh, hopefully it's out um, and released by the end of the day. And um, I will see you all again very, very soon. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have a chance to sign up for classes with Vogue, um, please do. If you have any questions, just email me or leave a comment in um, the box down below. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you for um, putting bread in the jar. <laughs> the tip jar will also be down in the description box down below. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of your love, all of your support for everything and for making podcasting and vlogging so much fun and so rewarding thank you so much everybody i will see you all again very soon bye everyone